Okay. Let's see if you let's see if you can hear me now. I got to get rid of that back noise there. I know Denise is telling me no sound, no sound. Jennifer, can you guys can you hear me now? Spread the joy. Thank you, Denise, for spreading the blessings, sprinkling the love. I appreciate you so much. There it is. Wendy says, oh, good gravy girls. Okay. So let me just recap. <laughs> All I was doing was welcoming you. It was a talking head, but I was welcoming you to the comfy nest with grace. I'm going to be doing a napkin project today. I've got my camera table, my camera on my table and I've got camera on me. Um, I'm welcoming you as part of the craft around the clock group. It's a free group here on Facebook that you can join where you'll find a new creative coming on live every 45 minutes. Um, we have all signed up to be hostesses within that group and it is a blast. It is a fantastic group, lots of variety, lots of different personalities, lots of different crafts and creations, different tools and techniques. So check it out when we're done here. If you are not a member, well, Cynthia, whew, she says, I can hear you now. Oh, good gravy technology, right? <laughs> Hello, Marianne. She says, I can hear you. First time from Maine. Hello, my New England friend. I grew up in Massachusetts, right on the north side of Boston. So welcome, welcome, my friend. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm here. If you guys are here, you know, I normally have regular crafty. I call the folks here who hang out with me crafty chicks. We're the crafty chicks. We love to craft and create, explore and try new techniques, new products new supplies. Um, so there's that. But if you're here from Craft Around the Clock group or from anywhere and you're new, like our new friend from Maine, please make sure that you let me know that you're here and new. I know the Crafty Chicks will do their best to welcome you here to our fun community. Hi, Jackie. Welcome. So I showed you earlier. Let me get you on my table. Here, let's get you on the table. So I showed you, for those of you who are on my Telegram channel, I sent a little message saying, I'm going live, join me. And I showed you this napkin. This was what I was going to use on this five by eight tag. But you know what, you guys, I better back you up just a little. Like, let me lift you up a little bit. Hang tight. We're going to, just so you can see everything. Let me just whoop, back you up a little. There we go. That's better. So this is a five by eight tag. I actually have these in the shop. You can get them in sets of two. Um, they're fabulous. They're really thick. <laughs> they're really thick um, MDF board. They are from Decoposh Queen, which I am a Decoposh Queen retailer. Um, so you can get these. I have a limited supply now, just kind of testing out if this is a size that you guys would like. This is the medium tag that I have in stock now. I'm going to use this today. Thank you for sharing, Miss Karen. I appreciate you so much. Let me see, girls, girls, guys, and girls. Let me see. Yeah, there. That way you can see me and you can see the project. Hi, Mary. Hi, Jennifer. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. She says she would love Grace. And I love your, your, look at, she says, welcome. You're so sweet and warm and welcoming. And I appreciate you so much. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's see. Five by eight tag. You can get them in my store. This is not the napkin I'm going to use today. <laughs> this is a napkin that was from box six in the Napkin Lovers Club. That is one of my membership groups where you get a box of supplies. Sent to your door. It includes napkins, rice paper, or decoupage paper, and craft supplies. It's a quarterly box. So the box covers the materials that you would need for the full quarter. Go live every couple of weeks in there doing workshops, teaching techniques, and about new well, not new, but teaching you about different products and their benefits and strengths and weaknesses um, with deco, with, you know, in relation to decoupage. We especially decoupage with napkins. This is from box six. Changed my mind. I'm not going to use that one, you guys. <laughs> I decided to use a couple of napkins from box seven. So all the napkin love lovers club members if you are here say hello give us an nlc che um, check in in the comments and let me know if you've gotten your box and what you think of it um they're all sharing their happy mail I, I ask them to share happy mail photos like it's a little selfie with their box in the group and it is so fun to see everybody's happy smiling faces with their boxes hello penny welcome welcome i'm so glad you're here look at all these friends oh my gosh it's so exciting i love that you guys are here okay so anyway um, I'm going to use two napkins. I'm doing the box opening, the full box opening for the Napkin Lovers Club box seven, which just goes out now. Like they just went out this week, this past week. Um, I still have boxes left. So if anybody's interested in joining the group, it is a quarterly membership group, costs $44 flat fee to be long for the quarter. Okay. And you'll get your boxes fly sent to your door. 
pretty much within hours of you joining. So consider that. Penny says, I got my box a couple of days ago in Texas. Woo -woo! Yay. So I'm going to use two of the napkins from that box and a tag. Actually, in the end, I'll probably be using two tags, but not today. Do you remember? So last week, I created this book using a napkin from box six on an Arteza board. This is a six by six Arteza canvas board. It's thick, you guys. And it made, I was going to make home decor out of it. And then when I had it all together and done, um, we did the crackle behind the napkin and we distressed it. After it was all done, I thought, oh, it's just going to be such a beautiful book cover. I need to make it a book cover. So I made it into a little book. Um, this is a piece of decoupage paper that I had in my stash from Tim Holtz. Um, so I did something different on the back, but this napkin is from box six from the Napkin Lovers Club. So in the same spirit, because I absolutely love this book. I love the way it turned out. I put um, like chipboard really on the inside for pages. We're going to do another book, but we're going to do it. I thought it would be really fun to do this shape as a book cover. So when you buy these from my website, you get two, you get two in the pack. And I thought this could make a really fun book cover. And then we could put some really fun tags or charms or something from the holes that are on the top of the tag. So that's what we're gonna do. I've already gone ahead and painted this one front and back with some just cream colored paint so that we could start decoupaging right away because I like to have a white base behind my napkins just to really show the colors on the napkins. Let me show you the napkins that we're going to use. So this is one of them. Um, gorgeous colors in this. I love the colors. And this is the other one that I'm going to use to create this cover for this book. Maybe it's better if I go this way. And I want you to notice how they really coordinate. Um, I love curating the napkins for the box, the Napkin Lovers Club box. And I love curating them so that they match and that they coordinate. And they're usually in subsets. So they're th this box, they got 21 napkins. And usually I put them in subsets of five, six napkins that might match and that coordinate so that you can use them in one project together and they're going to look really nice. So that's what I'm going to use today. Debbie made the book too. Debbie, please share in the Napkin Lovers Club. Please, please. We would love to see. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Deborah. Yay. Tita says, I got my box and I love it. I know, Karen, isn't this cool? This thick book cover. Oh, I just love it so much. We're going to do another one with the tag. Um, hello, Miss Phyllis. She got her box and she's loving it. Yay. I'm so glad. Oh, Sandy says, I'm loving the contents of my box. Yay. I'm going to do a full box opening on Thursday at 8 a.m. for the early words. So join me Thursday. I have an event here on the page that you can click on just RSVP and then you'll get a reminder or make sure you're on my Telegram channel. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to decoupage this on fabric. I have a whole session about decoupaging on fabric and what I tested a whole bunch of different decoupage glues and reported back. Um, and we, we did made zippered pouches in the group. Uh, that was probably box five. So this is going to go on fabric and it's going to go on the cover. But before this goes on the cover, I'm going to decoupage this onto the book cover, this tag with this napkin, because I think it's just going to make such a beautiful background. I have that really thick um, green stripe there. I'm going to move this down, actually. I think I'm going to end up doing it like this. I mean, you could do it this way, too. But I think I'm going to go horizontally. And then this is going to go on fabric on top of that. So it's going to be a two-layered book cover. So let's get this one on here. I'm really debating about making this super wrinkly. I may. I may. Do you think I should go super wriggly? Oh, my son is back to school today, Katana. He is well, but my mother-in-law is supposed to leave tomorrow. You guys say a little prayer. If you're the praying kind, she woke up sick this morning and she thinks she has a stomach bug, but you know, there, my son had COVID and influenza A together at the same time. And now she's not feeling great. So she's supposed to fly out tomorrow and she's not. She's rearranging her plans because she don't feel so good. So we got stuff going around in our house. So say a little prayer if you don't mind. And Katana, thank you for asking about my, about my Landon. Good morning, Cheryl. Cheryl said, I'm so jealous that you guys have your boxes. <laughs> Cheryl, it's on its way and it'll be so worth the wait. Yes, this is one of the napkins in your box and here's another. So this is the first 
site that some like Cheryl hasn't gotten her box yet. The others who have gotten their box and a lot have already saw these in their box. Um, this is among the 21 napkins that they got. But yes, these are both in your box, Cheryl. So there's a little, a little sneak peek. All right, let's get to, I think I'm gonna do this wrinkly, you guys. What does that mean? I'm gonna really purposefully wrinkle this <laughs> application of the napkin. So I'm getting my glue on here and I'm gonna put it on kind of thick. I'm kind of dabbing on. I wanna make sure you guys, make sure you know me, I gotta make sure to get those edges and I don't wanna miss the spot. I hate getting like stuff in this little hole, but we gotta get everything covered. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of glue here and let's do a little bit at a time. We'll do half a tag at a time. I'm really gonna go with a lot here, hitting my edges. And I'm gonna crinkle this napkin up purposefully so it's super distressed and textured. See how thick I have that application of glue? That is gonna help with the thick and textured because the glue itself, it'll take it a hot minute to dry, but that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna worry about placement because I'm gonna scrunch this up, in fact, Let's like, I want it super wrinkly and we're gonna make, oh, I'm hoping to get those wrinkles to pop out with some distress. Yeah, let's go this way with some distressing um, later. So I am purposefully, if you see this, it's like super like crinkled up and it's not flat and that is on purpose. I'm gonna start on the top. I do wanna make sure though that my, um, that they're semi horizontal, like I don't want them the the lines to be like wonky this way i mean it may happen you never know with me but that's not my goal that's not my goal i got my special pouncing brush every new member of the club is getting they get a welcome gift of a pouncing brush and one of my favorite glues i have a couple of favorite glues to be honest with you um and we go, i go through all of that in the group explaining which ones and why i love them so much so um you're getting now, I switched it from my other favorite to this one. You guys are going to be getting this one as a welcome gift now. Okay, look at, see what I said about crinkly and wrinkled? Look at that. <gasps> look at that delicious texture right there. Oh man, that's beauteous. All right, let's do the bottom half. Let's do the bottom. Yes, the glue that I'm using now, somebody's asking, Debbie. Debbie, um, Debbie's asking now what kind of glue. So this one is the one that I'm now carrying in my store. I'm, it's a Pentart product, project. So it comes from Europe, but Decoupage Queen is my supplier. And um, you can get this in the store, in my store. You can buy a small bottle or I'm working out of the large bottle. It is the Decoupage, I don't want it to spill. <laughs> Varnish and glue from Pentart. And this one is matte. You know, it comes in silky shine. It comes in a bunch of different um, sheens. And this one happens to be matte. So see what I'm doing? See how, like, I want this to, like, really get in that glue and crinkle in there. And so I'm putting a really thick application of glue. And then I want this to be crinkly. I'm not trying to stretch it and flatten it out. I'm trying to keep it super hi there pauline new from louisiana welcome welcome our friend from louisiana i want this super crinkly so see what i'm doing i'm purposefully making it super crinkled you can use your fingers or use your pouncing brush and get it in there remember what i say about watching your pouncing brush make sure it's not wet you want to make sure it because that glue will go right through that napkin onto your pouncing brush and you don't want a wet brush okay we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes while we work with fabric, okay? We'll come back to this. Oop, you can go aside. Here is what we're gonna put on fabric. And I just had, you guys, I had some fabric scraps. <laughs> it's just some like muslin or canvas fabric, really thin canvas though, fabric. Um, I don't know what the technical name of it is, but we're going to put this napkin on there and this will be a layered cover to my book. And this scene is just so beautiful with the colors. Oh, what do you guys think of this? It's it's just so pretty. I love the door on the little house. It just looks so warm and inviting with the flowers. And it, there's like a creek or a little bit of water here and a little bit of water here. It looks like a watercolor to me. Um, I just think it's beautiful. This is what's going to go on a piece of fabric. So I'm going to separate the layers. And then we're just going to take a chunk of this. I don't need all of it. I just need a little chunk. 
and we're going to glue it onto fabric. So see, I've got it separated, the plies. When you get these napkins, of course, you get, for many of them, four panes, four different houses to work with. I just need one today. And here's the piece of fabric that I tore from that scrap. I did this earlier. I tore it. And this is my, the tag that it's going to go on. So I wanted it to leave a little bit of a frame around with that background color that we're working with. And I was thinking I would make it big, but I'm going to tear it down to make it even smaller. So let me just decide here. Like, I think it'll be like that big, the house, maybe a little smaller. So all I'm going to do to show you how I tear, I just put a little notch in there with a pair of scissors and then just tear it. And I love the really distressed way that this frays when you tear the fabric. I'm sure you've seen people do that before. So that's what I did there. And then we're going to decoupage this house scene on top. So I just need, see, I just need a section of this. I don't, I won't fit the whole thing. But I just need a section and I do want to capture those flowers. So I'm going to go like this. That's what I need for napkin is about that size. So, um, you know, in the Napkin Lovers Club, when you're trying to do something like this and you want to see exactly what's going to show on your project, like here, I know the swatch of napkin or the um, fabric that I want to use and I'm putting it over to make sure I'm going to fit that house, which I will. But if you really wanted to see what was going to show on that piece of fabric, you you would need another way to see it. And I, I showed the girls a way to make a template for themselves for that. Um, it makes it really easy to see what you're doing so that you don't second guess yourself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with, this is just some water on a paintbrush. And I'm just going to mark off kind of where I need to tear that napkin. So I need to tear it there. And truly... It would be easier if I just cut this, get a section of this off. I want torn edges on my napkin. I want these torn edges to show on my fabric. This is going to be layered. So I'm not going to get all of this. So I need to come in and just cut off. And I don't want to cut scissored edge. So I'm going to come in with this wet paintbrush. Actually, girls, it would be a lot easier for me if I used my water brush because the water is in the barrel of the brush so I can squeeze it as I go and pull out more water and then what I do sometimes is I'll just grab my pencil eraser a little pencil eraser you can use like a squeegee or something and just tear away at that edge so I get a nice beautiful torn edge let's do the same thing it's very wet now these edges because I've just wet them right so be careful that you don't tear your napkin I'm going to take a little bit of that water off my table. And then let's take off some of this. I'm just going to wet it and then uh, pull it apart with this eraser. Same thing here. I don't like this the way this looks. So I'm going to pull that apart a little bit more. And then let's just check and see size wise. It's still much too big. I need to take off. I'm going to take off a little bit more over here. And that's okay. A little bit of my flowers come out. Oh no, did you see what happened? Oh no. It's okay. We'll figure this out. Um, this is this is why it's good too. You have remember, no, we don't stress about this. We don't stress. We don't, girls. We don't stress. We create for the fun of creating. And if something goes wrong, remember you have four panes on your napkin. So I have three more of these panes, these designs, if I need it. But let's just see what happens if we put this on here. What's it going to look like? Actually, see, I really like the size of it this way. Um, let's take off. We may make it a little smaller. See, I have that little notch right there. But you know what? I'm going to be putting my, my idea was to put... It's lots of layers. So we're going to have this base layer of napkin. And then we're going to have the fabric with this napkin. And then I'm going to put some title or something on my book with words. And I could actually position the words right over that notch where we're missing some napkin. Um, so I'm going to dry the napkin a little bit. You know, the napkins, they, they suck up the water. That's what they do. That's their job is to suck up moisture. So that's what it did. But then it becomes really fragile and it easily torn. 
somebody had an angry face. <gasps> I hope nobody's mad at me. I see a little angry face in there. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it would be so fun to paint flowers. Yes. All right, let's see. Here's my goal was to use this on the cover of my book. Now, okay, this is definitely still too long. It's too long, so I gotta get rid of some of this. Oh, <laughs> girls, listen, here, look at I ripped it. Um, you will learn, when you hang out with me, you're gonna learn all the things not to do, and then you're gonna see how to fix it. Because I have gotten really good at fixing up mess ups. Like this tear right here, it doesn't mean a stinking thing. We're still gonna be able to decoupage that together and it's no one's even gonna know the difference. So don't, please, when you're working with your napkins and you're working in any projects that you've got, please don't stress yourself. My other, my other membership group is called the Craft Therapy Club because of that. Like I really encourage you guys to enjoy the process of creating simply for the process and don't get too overly worked up about the outcome, just have fun and create and make pretty things that bring your heart joy. All right, that's perfect. That fits there perfectly. This little notch, I have a bunch of different words that like I was thinking could be cool. Um, and I think what I could do here, if I just left that little notch that came out, if I focus my word down on the bottom here on the cover of my book, and then I could also put like a piece of like additional cheesecloth or fabric or lace behind it to cover that up. So this little notch that accidentally has come out of the bottom of my napkin. Ooh, wait, where is it? There it is. I'm not going to worry about that in the least. We're going to decoupage it on there and call it good. We're going to call it good. Remember, layering, layering, layering. When you're creating, layering is your um, friend. Like, because it adds a whole lot of dimension and depth and something really interesting to look at. Okay, we're going to decoupage on here. I don't want this to move around, so it's probably a good idea for me to try to tape that to the table. Hello, Joyce. How are you, friend? There's Joyce Resto saying hello. Lindsay says it happens to me all the time. Listen, girls, <laughs> if you're not messing up, you're not human, right? And I want you to just be in your whole glorious human self. Just don't worry about it. Get really comfortable with things going awry and finding, like challenge yourself new ways to kind of overcome that so that you don't, like, have you ever done it? Have you ever started a project and like tore it up or throw it out or consider it like not worthy because there's a little bit of a flub up something that you didn't intend have you ever done that say in the comments if that's ever happened to you whether it be an art journal page or tags or greeting cards or painting or something that you were trying to make and it just didn't work out the way you wanted it and so you throw it out or you discard it or you put it on the in the uh, don't look at that again pile well, the way I would challenge you, I would challenge you to really look at that like as a way to become more versatile in your creating and to overcome that mess up, like this little notch that came out of here. I didn't want that. I didn't intend that, but I'm going to work with it. It's okay. Let's challenge ourselves to create with it anyway. I'm going to place this down into this glue. See here where I have this tear right here? I have that little tear right there too. Let's make sure I have enough glue in this corner to grab up that piece that I tore. And I want them to be together. So I'm gonna grab a little set of tweezers and I'm going to grab, the napkin is so, so thin and fragile. And I'm just gonna push it into the glue like this, as close as I can get them together like that. So that it, it kind of, kind of works itself out. Okay, back to my pouncing brush because I do not want to put this wet brush. You can, but with napkins, they are extremely fragile when they get wet. So instead of brushing on top with the friction of the fabric, the friction of the napkin, the friction of the brush, it's better for me to come in and pounce this in to the glue. I put a nice thick coat of glue and we're gonna pounce this in. Now I wanna make sure I don't have any glue on there because I don't want it pulling out my napkin. Oh, so pretty. That's going to be the cover of my book. Oh, it's so pretty. I have, look at, I missed this corner, girls. 
<laughs> oh, imagine that right here. I'm missing some glue. I just didn't get enough down there on the fabric. There we go. Okay, now this can get set aside. I will put another coat of varnish, the glue and varnish on top of this once it's dry, but we're gonna let that settle in, sink into the fabric. That's gonna become the front panel for our book. Oh my gosh. Did you know you can decoupage napkins on fabric? Look at the texture. <gasps> I love it so much. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll come over it. And you don't have to use this. This is a varnish and a glue. A lot of times I'll use the varnish and glue underneath and I've like a really solid top coat. So I'll come in with something like Mod Podge on top of it to really seal it in. And you know, Mod, Mod Podge has a bunch of different versions of Mod Podge that you can use. It's beautiful. You're doing this tonight, Debbie says. So I will post this. Girls, those of you who are in the Napkin Lovers Club, I will make sure to post this video inside the Napkin Lovers Club. It will go in the guide and um, for this month or for this quarter and it will go in the featured tab for the quarter so that you guys can find it later. It appears as though, let's move this over. It appears as though this is still a bit wet and I don't want to do anything with it while it's wet. So let's chit chat. Um, will the cloth part, I need a tag though. What? Well, the cloth part. Oh, you need the tag. Go to my website, Debbie, the comfy nest with grace.com and these five by eight tabs, tags, you can buy them on my website. They come in sets of two. I'm so glad you love it. That makes me happy. Jackie says she loves it. Yay, Jackie. Thanks for telling me. Listen, when you guys give us those comments, I have to tell you, when you guys give us those comments that you love something or that's beautiful or, you know, sometimes you guys say, oh, I never would have thought to do that that way. It really is such a boost for us creators. I'm sure I represent more than myself when I say that. Because when you're creating, you can you can constantly, we just talked about it, constantly second guess yourself. Like, is it good enough? Is this what I wanted? Is this working out the way it should? You can second guess yourself. And so your comments, when you guys take the time to say, oh, like Tammy's saying, I love the texture. I do too, I'm a huge fan of it. So thank you for telling me. Those comments mean the world to us. Um, oh, Penny. <laughs> But he says, I wonder how many of us are going to miss our com com our corners. I always miss my corners, girl. Like, see, look, 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 always. Like, there's just one little teeny tiny spot. As hard as I try to get the glue in there, as hard as I try, I constantly miss. <laughs> Don't be like me, Penny. You you be more thorough than me. Like, look at, look at here, this corner too. I missed it, but it's okay. Let's. I'm just going to put a little more glue on there while I'm drying it and then on top to make sure that that stays. I will use a sanding block to sand this off the cover. And I'm gonna show you how deep this texture is. Like, look at this is even actually almost like a little flap of napkin. But it, it looks like, you guys, it is so similar to the crackle that we use the crackle medium to, uh, to achieve. When you can take a napkin and not, like somewhere between, scrunching it up and laying it down there's this space that you just saw me do it where if you put it down really loosely and really emphasize those folds like look at this emphasize those folds you're gonna get gorgeous gorgeous texture like it's just so beautiful so i did i did vivaciously <laughs> let's use a positive word i was vivaciously pouncing and I pounced too strongly and I, this is what I got. I tore my napkin right there, just a tish. Leave it, I'm not gonna bother it. Not gonna bother it. Maybe there'll be something that I can put over that later. Or what I do plan to do is come in with my, my archive inks and do some distressing of these wrinkles. I want them to really show. So let's get the napkin more where it needs to be on this cover. And then we'll we'll just do a little distressing. This is still drying. My little pretty little house there. Um, Vicky says I didn't know about napkins on fabrics. Um, yes. Well, we're going to see what kind of time we have today, right? I have about fifteen minutes left, so let's see what we can get through. Yes. And those of you who are in the napkin lovers club, particularly if you're new, there is an entire um, workshop that we did when we did the canvas bags, the zippered bags on 
decoupaging on fabric and the, the best results that I got, I did a lot of testing. Took me a couple of months. I did a lot of testing over time, even putting the fabric panels in the washing machine to see um, how they held up. The different, the variety of glues that you have as options, how they held up in the wash, how they worked with the fabrics, um, what kind of sheen they left behind. So you will find an entire workshop on that inside the group. If you have trouble finding it, you can just let me know. Um, Jennifer says, I used to do that too, but Grace has helped me not be so picky. Now I can embrace the flaws better. Yes, Jennifer, embrace them. I love that comment. Embrace them, see what you can do with them, challenge yourself to overcome them. This now, this is going to go, oh my gosh, isn't that going to be a pretty cover? To this book, but I want this to be more distressed. This is very flappy, floppy. I've got some real wrinkles there that are very floppy. And when I'm trying to decide, so just thought process here, I could come in with my inks. I want to do a little distressing with inks and my little foam dauber. You can use a makeup wedge if that's what you have or sponge. But I want to come in and distress. My fear is that this napkin is still very soft and pliable and it is not sealed into the tag. All I did was use the varnish and seal underneath it. And yes, some of it oozes up through the napkin and makes it wet, but it's not completely sealed. So I don't want to start distressing until I get this sealed. I want it more um, top coated and in place before I start doing any distressing. So I have to come in with some type of top coat. Now, like I said, you can use Mod Podge. This is a varnish. It's a varnish and a glue. So I could use that on top as well. I think that's what I'm going to do because Mod Podge as a sealer can sometimes, um, it will sometimes resist any paints or inks or markers or things like sprays or anything that you want to put on top of your project. And I don't want it to resist my inks. So I'm going to come in with more of my varnish and glue. And this better not, it was starting to roll off the table. My little, <laughs> my little dauber started, it was rolling off the table. So I'm going to come in. So this, when I tell you like layers, um, part of your success will come from understanding what products you have in your stash or that you could get like what you might have available to you and how to use them like the fact that mod podge will sometimes resist a new color that you want to put on top because i want to do some distressing i want some color on top of this and mod podge can sometimes resist so i'm going to use my varnish instead it's a matte varnish so it leaves a matte it's not silky shiny it's not glossy it's not glittered so you can see I'm putting another nice thick coat of it on there to now seal the napkin into the wood. And I wanna make sure to get it into the grooves of all these wrinkles, cause I really want this stuff sealed down. So it is a process because, you know, the layering, especially when you're working with wet layers like this, it's going to take it a little time to dry. And we force, I always tell the girls this in the group, we, when you see us go live here for you in a demonstration that's 45 minutes long, we sometimes do some prep work. Like I already painted the background of this. I already got pretty much my fabric ready. Like I'd picked it out and I knew what size I wanted. So I did that ahead of time so that that was all done pre-work. Um, and you'll see us kind of force this drying time along with our dryers. And I want you to know that I honestly think it's best if you can, I got a little extra napkin on there that shouldn't have been there. So let me pull that off. Um, I want you to know that I would always encourage you to let it dry in its own time Seriously, like if you can just let it do its thing on its own and really seal and cure into your project if you have time in between. So go walk the dog, go call your grandkids or your, you know, your kid or your neighbor and say hello. Give it some time. Go get a cup of coffee or tea. Go for a little walk and then come back and work on it later. I usually do my projects, my own personal projects like that. I'll, I'll go to bed and I'll say, oh, before I go to bed, I'm going to put that crackle on that project so that it sits overnight and dries and cures. That way in the morning, I can do the next step. It's I think it's always best to do that. Um, so when you see us 
pushing these along quickly. <laughs> Just know it's, it's part of the nature of the beast of doing live demonstrations. Joyce says, beautiful as always. I love how you come up with a remedy for every problem. Why, thank you, Miss Joyce. Thank you. Oh, Lindsay, I know you told me not to forget my corners. <laughs> oh, Tammy's loving napkin over crackles. No, Carol, I am not using the iron on method this time because I really want these wrinkles. I want, look at that luscious texture. And it looks so beautiful with this napkin as when, when I bundle these napkins together, I generally include a few background napkins. This is a beautiful background for a greeting card for this project, which will become a book cover. But this could be a home decorative tag that you hang somewhere in your house. Um, I like to have a background and it coordinates with what is going to become my, my focal point is going to be the little house. And then even with my little notch taken out of it, I'll come over this in addition and put some wording and I'll probably add some more. I think I'm going to add some more, um, maybe some lace or some more texture in the way of a fabric or a lace or a ribbon or something. Um, this needs some time to dry. So let's, let me just do a quick check of comments and then we'll see what's next here. Uh, when you crackle, do you put it on top of the napkin? You can, Katana. I was testing that out this weekend. I don't know if you saw my comment in the napkin lovers club. I was testing it out this weekend. Um, ah, I could show you that. Hang tight. Where is it? Where are my little? Oh, here they are. Hold on, girls. I gotta get up. I was testing out crackle on a variety of surfaces, and underneath these, you can't see them, but underneath it, there are napkins underneath these. And I was testing it out because I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun to have the crackle show through the napkin, but be on top so we really get that texture, the actual crackle mediums. So I was trying to figure out a way to do it without color. Like, can I get the, the texture to come out without using a colored paint? Like this is a golden paint. This one's kind of a grayish paint. And then I, I use some wax on top of this to make those crackles really show. So I was, then I was testing on paper <laughs> and this is a napkin. It's like a crow behind this piece of book page. And I did use crackle. You can see the glorious crackle. Let's see if I can get it in camera. Oh my gosh. Look at that crackle. You guys, are you kidding me with that gorgeous crackle? But see what happened. My crow, you can kind of see the, you know, the crow's feet here, but it got really obscured. This I did with a wash of paint, like a really light wash of paint and my liquid medium. Um, and then I tried it again on just a piece of decorative paper. I'm trying to figure out a way so that we can still see these gorgeous napkin designs and put the crackle on top. Here, I have the crackle underneath. And of course, we can see that gorgeous napkin from box six really well. Here, it didn't work so well when I went over it with the paint color, even with a wash. Um, and here, I think for part of it, I, I really mixed in a lot of the liquid medium to try to get that liquid medium to get those crackles to come out. And it worked, like the crackles are there, but we get a really faint view of our little bird. So I'm testing things, girls. This is what I did all weekend, was testing crackles with different paints and mediums. Um, to see what was going to be the best option for doing it on top. Um, yeah, Marsha, she says, I just ordered a couple of days ago. So on the next order, see if you can't add these tags to your order. They are in the section called craft supplies surfaces. So you want to go to the section called surfaces. You can still join the Napkin Lovers Club. Barbara's asking a fantastic question right there. Yes, the Napkin Lovers Club is still open. I still have some boxes left. I send out a box of supplies and napkins, and this time it's 21 napkins um, with the supplies that we'll use throughout the quarter to create with. It's $44 flat fee that includes the shipping and tax, and it's quarterly. So you pay now, and then if you stay in the group, if you don't opt out, if you don't cancel, you'll have access to the group through March, and then on April 1st, the next auto charge goes, and you'll get another box for another set of napkins and workshops and techniques. So yes. Barbara, we would love to have you join us. I'm going to grab the, for you, I'm going to grab real quick the link to join if you want to, or just to check it out. Like this link brings you right to the Knack and Lovers Club website. Well, it's my website and the tab on there where you can, um, 
where you can join if you want to. So just give me a second here. Oh my gosh, I'm all goofed up. <laughs> Try to do technology. Come on, baby. I know you can do it. Where are you? There we are. StreamYard. Stop playing with me, girl. All right, there it is. I just put it, Barbara, in the comments for you, the link. You can look at past projects that we've done. You can look at them. Some of the reviews from some of the ladies who are in the group or who have been in the group, you can see the price, the schedule, all of it, and you can sign up using that link. So, catching a few moments while at lunch break. Well, Lisa Kennedy, my friend, thank you for being here. It's a napkin on a tag, that's right. Um, I've learned not to stress over boo-boos, Charlene says. Through grace, I have learned not to stress over boo-boos. Everything could be fixed. You're welcome for that, Miss Charlene. Thank you for saying that. Yes, thank you for saying that. It makes me feel really, um, it just really boosts us when we hear those kinds of things because it, it lets us know that what we're doing is working. So thank you for sharing. Lindsay says, the antique mod podge that you have to do layers to make a project look aged, this one here. I don't think it's really very noticeable to be truthful with you. <laughs> I think it's very, very faint. But yes, Antique Mod Podge, that's the goal of it. That's what it's supposed to do. Mm. <laughs> Lindsay, I love your Mad Hatter project comment. Oh, Pauline says, I throw so much away making boo-boos. Girlfriend, girlfriend. I mean, like, I mean, sometimes I suppose maybe you need to, but I would really encourage you when you have little boo-boos like this one, figure out a way to work it in. Um, it will take so much. First of all, it's a big challenge. It's a great challenge for ourselves. And second of all, um, it's a great way to like, just let go of the stress of it. Like, cause you feel really sad when you have to throw something out. <laughs> don't, 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 do, don't go doing that girl. Um, I do a lot of cool behind the scenes for subscribers. Oh yes, that's true. Jennifer. I love doing that for you guys. Did you send my box out? Stephanie, your, your order didn't go through. We still got to get through your credit card issue. So no, it did not go out, friend. When you guys, when your boxes go out, you get an, like an email saying, here's your confirmation number and your tracking number. So if you did not get that, your box did not go out. Everybody everybody else has gone out though, who is, who is enrolled. So you need to go and enroll, Stephanie. Go back onto the website and re-enroll because your credit card, it didn't work out, so. We want to make sure that we get that all fixed. You're welcome, Pauline. Okay, so this still has, like, see right there? That is glue. <laughs> that is glue. That is my mess up. I ripped the napkin a little bit, but right here, that's like wet glue. It's just, I put it on really thick. So in order for me to do the distressing part, this needs to be dry, and we're just about out of time. So... Um, oh, Jennifer, thanks for, I got your comment up there and I, I appreciate so much all the kind words you guys say. So let me just get up like this so I can just recap. We've got this tag. You can get these tags on my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com. You get a set of two. I'm going to make this into a book cover. Okay. I will continue this here on the public page so you can see it all come together. So I'll just hold on to this. I won't. I won't go on with it. So stay tuned. Make sure you follow the page and get on the Telegram text alerts so that if you want to see this project finish up, we are going to make a book cover out of this. We're going to make a book out of this, just like we did here with the canvas panels. Okay. Um, so if you want to follow along with this project, make sure that you're following the page. This is going to be on the cover of my book. I have it taped to the table so I can, like, it won't move around when I dry it. It's still very wet. It's fabric with a napkin on top and a lot of glue in between. So I need to get that to dry completely before we can work with it. Same here, and I can't distress until it's completely dry. So this is gonna be a, like a couple of parts here to get this one done. Um, so I hope you'll stay tuned here. There's someone new coming on live right now in the Craft Mama Clock Group, so make sure that you join them. Um, Jennifer says, I can't wait to see you finish this up. I thank you. I hope you'll hang out with that. I know you are, Jennifer. You're one of my crafty chicks. Um, everybody else, make sure you follow the page and I will catch you next time. I'll send out a Telegram message anytime I go live, either here on YouTube. I just applied, you guys, for Pinterest Live. I just put an application in, so I'm hoping to get approved to do that too. 
Um, so you'll find me all over the place. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it all so much. Thanks for the good comments too, you guys. Have a blessed Monday.